that uh, and it's not advertising um, you know it's it, it's it's story sharing and it needs to be this uh, this entertainment this provide this value uh, and and then the channels you know you can work through how what channels you want to share it on and and, and sometimes the, the the vessel the boat uh, the ski of choice you know may be the the influencer route um, and part of that influencer could be you know the one who's out there with the massive Instagram audience or it could be just a local, a uh, really important treasure you may have that that skis every day and uh, the unsung hero that's out there from the first tracks to the last tracks and so it's there's it's about it's about nurturing and defining that spirit of flake making is the way I look at it and I would call my form of of story sharing or if you want to call it marketing I call it flake making Aloha and welcome to the Groundswell Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Martin. Hey, if you're a content creator, you're going to want to listen to this episode. I've got an incredible guest, Matt Mosteller. He's written so much content. I mean, hundreds of articles. He's he's everywhere. He's under Powder Matt, if you want to look him up. He's been the Globe and Mail, Matter Network. He's written for so many of the newspapers. Um, and uh, he's a venture blogger, author, journalist, not to mention Senior Vice President of uh, Ski Hill. And he knows a lot about making content, more almost more than anybody else that I know. And I think you're going to find his insights very eye-opening in terms of how to create content, how to create uh, work with influencers, and make me- meaningful engagement. So let's just paddle in. Let's talk to uh, Matt. Aloha, and welcome to another episode of the Ground Soul Marketing Podcast where I connect you to exceptional humans and sustainable ideas. Today, we're going to do a deep dive into social media, influencers, digital marketing, content creation, and possibly some deep powder. With today's guest, his name is aptly, well, his nickname is aptly Powder Matt, a good friend of mine, Matt Mosteller. Welcome to the show, Matt. Hey, Scott. It's awesome. It's great to be here. And, you know, we've got uh, the flakes uh, have melted away and, and we're into another season. Totally. Are you? Uh, are you? You were traveling recently. Were you just in Greenland or something? Well, we were trying to just uh, take a different, uh, uh, enjoying spring, uh, which which is a classic season, and and it's for all of the soul fill reasons, you know, it's uh, it's the uh, I never say last turns, but it's the time to celebrate uh, new beginnings, new season and uh, sometimes your biggest snowfalls happen during that time uh so it can be a great flake uh fest and it's also um the time when you know these uh, incredible celebrations happen along the powder highway of british columbia but we wanted to keep that rolling so we wanted to make turns in other places so we extended the season and into uh the end of april into early may and and uh, made some tracks on other places so your ski resorts that you manage, you had a pretty good season then. Oh, you know what? This season, um, you know, it's been it's been awesome. Every season uh, is super special. It's it's a time with people uh, that matter and and people that share uh, joy and and good times together and and uh, experience the power of of nature and wind in their face and flakes uh, uh, flake time. It's it's super super special and. And I think, you know, the Powder Highway between uh, Fernie and Golden and um, uh, that re- whole region uh, is, uh, if in North America, it's one of those places that every skier and rider dreams of. So there's so many things I'd like the audience to hear about you and your story before we kind of get into the marketing aspect. One of the things I'd love to um, just sort of take a step back Um You've written a book, Adventure's Guide to Living a Happy Life, and I think that's a bit of a manifesto of how to live life. And I was wondering if you could kind of share with us a little bit about some of the insights of that and some of the really um, exciting stories um, that you might want to share that really sort of underscore what's brought you to that uh, way of thinking. Well, it's, it's, uh, th- thank you. Uh, I, I've, I've, uh, you know, I hope, hopefully I can share something that people will take away and, and, and maybe be able to apply in their life. A lot of these things certainly have been 
over a long period of time, a long uh, journey on on the road, and uh, many adventures later, and lots of learning from those adventures, lots of failures, lots of uh, um, in between, lots of uh, uh, celebrations. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff, and and I think for me, um, one of the things that's really really important of a takeaway, uh, it always uh, always be learning. Um, that's probably one of my most uh, important uh, takeaways. That, that uh, when every time when I was on that road or that that journey or that adventure, um, if I got stale or mechanical, not only did it take away from the energy and goodness of the feelings of those moments that were happening, but also it, it caused uh, some chaos. Uh, it caused some um, failure to see um, see opportunities. Uh, it, it caused a, a downfall in some of my positivity. Um, you know, the goodness. I believe that goodness brings goodness, and and uh, that looking um, through the goggle lens uh, of uh, of positivity is is super powerful. And every time you get stale and mechanical in your life, um, it flattens you. It's like a tire on your car that's lost air. And, and you don't go anywhere. And it doesn't mean that you can't, it's a constantly thing though. Always be learning is, means constantly challenging yourself. It's not always being in a great place as far as sometimes that change or maybe the unknown. But if you're not in that time, uh, that space or that place of always growing and learning, I don't think you're, you're going forward. And you have so many stories. I mean, you've written, how many do you think articles you've written um, over the years, oh boy, I'm I'm well into four hundred plus uh, e- easily now, and and uh, you know it's been for a variety of different outlets, um, from ones that have you know large audience. I mean, I I actually just did, had a story done on me just recently in in Bloomberg, and the person sent me a note back saying, you know, hey, you reached uh, forty five million people with this story. Jeez. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, but to me, it's really about, it's not the mass audience. It's about somebody, um, sharing a little, a special note back that said something that, uh, that what, uh, the place you shared, uh, y- yeah, it, it was an awesome experience. Thank you for sharing that adventure or the thoughts, uh, that you shared, uh, were, were meaningful and, and helped me along the way. You know, it's a, We've got, we've got a, um, my motivation is, is really giving back and hopefully being helpful, uh, worthy, being timely, um, and certainly being real or, or, and true on my voice. Yeah. Your stories are very uplifting. My, my comment about the volume is just how long, it's more of a testament of how long you've been doing it. I mean, I had a period of two years where, um, as you know, I was, I was publishing in the Herald and Vancouver Sun and National Post and stuff around, Heli skiing, cat skiing, and and for me it was a, a a huge effort, and I think I only hit like about sixty articles total, and uh, probably like three or four times that in blogging. But um, that to me was just I remember how much work it is. So you know, how do you do it? Like how like where do you find your inspiration to write? I know you do a lot of adventures, and you speak to that, but to do that volume, it's just not it's it's beyond the work. It's like you still have to have the content within you. Where does it come from? Well, I think a lot of it comes from uh, just this this quest that that uh, I'm on that that uh, I've got to give back, um, pr- primarily because of uh, w- in my beginnings and how how my life started down this path. And I'm super super grateful. Um, you know, this this uh, every step um, being a ski bum um, is a is a gift, and and. Uh, you know, I I uh, um, I always look at that. Uh, t- today, uh, tomorrow is too late, and, and today is a gift. And and how if I can do anything to help, um, you know, and assist or provide some nuggets that may uh, make a difference for, for somebody else. I mean, a big focus of mine is to get people outside, and both the United States and and Canada, you know, certainly have a, a challenge with uh, the nature deficit piece. But primarily, that's really really big big, big deal in the wintertime. Um, so I'm, 
I started out really being focused on trying to get people outside during winter. And that doesn't necessarily mean to ski or snowboard, but that's just getting outside, walking to your local park, um, taking a, a stroll in wintertime, how to properly dress for what kind of gear you may need, how to get that gear for a low cost or nearly free, how to get the clothing you may need, um, those kind of things to assist you along your way. And and then how to step into snowshoes and start maybe that or cross-country skis if you'd like to try that out. And just assisting people to get outside both for the, the obviously the healthy benefit, but maybe more importantly for the, the mind uh, and, and the strength that it can provide you uh, along your regular um, cubicle uh, time. Yeah, you and I were talking about this before about what you called nature deficit and, you know, the, you know, just that we were basically getting, there's a scarcity of, of places, nature, nature spaces. And uh, I can't remember, you had a really good catchphrase for it. Do you remember this? We were talking with uh, Yama Nomad and you were talking about, you know, your calling, which is to help people, um, you know, get out there more. But also just like this comment around, you know, people too much screen time and not enough nature time or something. I, I don't know. You might- well, one of our big things, you know, just certainly is this whole, uh, if you don't, um, tr- truly, uh, you can see it in your simplest uh, re- form of relationships. That could be with your uh, your best friend or and or maybe your, your dog. Um, and, and dogs are really good at this. And just watch the difference if you are, um, you know, uh, in the moment, uh, watch how many times uh, you pick up your screen and, and your friend will notice that. And more importantly, the dog uh, will notice it uh, almost even uh, quicker and more immediate. It's because they're about, about visual, eye to eye contact, um, you know, show me that care, um, you know, be, be with me, be present. And, uh, and I think, you know, if we don't do uh, more time disconnecting to reconnect, um, then, you know, there's a lot of elements um, uh, of detriment to, to our life that are, are cascading upon us. I love that disconnect to reconnect. That's great. So well, and it's, it's, you, it's, it's, it's pivotal. Ahead. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a vital piece that's uh, certainly happening in today's uh uh rapid uh and over um you know we're we are overwhelmed content overwhelm or digital overwhelm or screen overwhelm it's it's not you know no i don't think anybody's ever gone i've had nature overwhelm no i mean i i've read interesting stories about people walking off into the wilderness in that time. And there's a lot of great ones, but they never, you know, there's certain elements of that could be isolation, but there's a lot of growth that can happen for the human soul and spirit. uh, When we um, it's sometimes the elements of just even uh, one of the biggest challenges most people may have is how do you deal with yourself by yourself? Um, and, And that's, a lot of good learning comes from that. A lot of good strength, uh, a lot of good core um, confidence, and and um, I think those are elements that are really needed in, in people's day to day lives. I mean, you know that 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 make the resilience that happens from that, the perseverance that happens from that, the commitment that happens from that. You know, it's, it it cascades throughout every element of your life, from your professional passion to your relationships. I love that you're syndicating that those lessons in that mindset through your channels and through your efforts, because I feel like that's just such a quality voice in this, you know, muddle of content that we that we get. And it's like almost like a calling, like like you your each of your your articles you write, it feels like it's like you're you're kind of like um you know, teasing, begging, or introducing, or or sort of like inspiring people to go just go outside. You know, like you just toe dip it. You know, it's it's totally uh, uh, you know that that that's the uh, the door opener. Uh, I'm trying to draw people through the door, and uh, whether it's the front door or the back door, you choose. Um, but it takes just that one step. So. Of all the stories you've had, I've heard a story about uh, a grizzly bear attack. Is that a story you want to share? 
Well, it's it's um, certainly a, a story that uh, you know, I'd be absolutely frank with you. It's been very impactful, obviously, in my life. And, you know, I've really got three or four different things that have, uh, and some of them, one of them would be the grizzly bear and another may, might have been this, this time when it fell in a crevasse and another one would be freezing to, to death nearly in the, in the north. And those three things have, uh, and they're not the only ones, but I kind of go back to them because uh, they each have a moment of time for me that is, is a powerful reflection. Um, and, uh, um, I, I call it the, the, uh, the great, uh, um, snap, um, back to, um, the basics and, and the basics of being fortunate, being grateful, being respectful, uh, for every step you have. And it's always easy to find fault. Uh, it takes extra effort to take the time to remind yourself of all the goodness you have in your life. Humans are really wired, you know, kind of weirdly in that way. And we default to, um, to the negative and default to the, the, uh, I need more, or I don't have that, uh, or I want that instead of defaulting to shelter, food, friendship, warmth, care, trust, all of the good things that each of us have in every single day of our lives. Well said. So those major events, I mean, they've, I guess, you know, maybe uh, were they sort of, sort of like shaped what you're doing today or they were just a reminder? Well, I think that the thing that shaped me really goes back to even further and be basics of, of beginnings of time for me. And, and I was a super fat kid growing up and, and, uh, and how um, really impactful uh, a moment in time was for me. And, uh, you know, when you're super fat uh, kid, sometimes it, there's, there can be many challenges for you. A, you know, what people think you can't do that, B, their friends might be, or maybe they're not even friends, but they might be teasing you or are meanful ways. I mean, there's just so much going on. And and so it was pretty, uh, you know, felt sometimes lonely and isolated. And uh, But I got this great opportunity. At the time, it wasn't really seen as a great opportunity. It really was just a, a neighbor that was taking me uh, skiing, but they were just wanting you know, gas money, uh, and they loaded the classic station wagon and headed off to the mountains. And um, so, and in that parking lot, when we got to the parking lot, it, you know, it was the the uh, iced over uh, expanse, uh, car to car, um, fog windows, you know, uh, everybody departed. I'm sitting there, you know, by myself in the car. And, and uh no one was taking me skiing and no one was showing me how to ski. They just literally, and not, you can sit there and think about it. Those are the times when people uh, just wanted uh, to use me and take my money for their gas. And, but I, I, I sat there and, and as the windows um, iced up even more from the breathing, I opened the door slightly to get a little fresh air in. And uh, lo and behold, this um, person walking by said, you know, hey, kid, you know, what are you doing? And, uh, I, I'm said, well, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. Everybody's gone skiing is, Hey, well, come with me. I'll teach you how to ski today. And that person grabbed, uh, reached out, grabbed my hand and walked me across the frozen parking lot, took me inside the rental shop, got me all the gear, took me to the top of the rope toe and sent me on my way. And, uh, in a few steps, I felt freedom. I was that eagle soaring above the mountains and my whole life changed at that very moment oh my gosh that's such a good story so it was like it, it started from a gift from a perfect stranger yeah i didn't i don't even know his name to this day and if i did I, you know I, at one point it was all about joy because I, I i was overwhelmed with goodness inside of me the feelings i'd felt feelings that i had never ever felt in my life before and, and those feelings just powered me on my way. And then through that, you know, I just felt always I was given that gift. I've got to give that gift out to more people. And hopefully I can find a way to continue to um, hopefully share some information, some stories, some uh, inspiration, some nuggets, some, some, something that will maybe stir inside somebody else and, and hopefully provide some goodness for them. 
Amazing. That just makes so much sense with the the whole story of like the amount of content and your whole persona, you know, being a ski gum, I guess, and a story wrangler, you like to call yourself. So amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Um, let's talk a little bit about marketing. Let's kind of like maybe shift a little bit. And now that we know sort of the why behind you've become such a titan of content marketing, Let's talk a little bit about what you do um, in your role. You're you're managing the marketing for multiple ski resorts. You also manage influencers, athletes, and all this kind of stuff. Could you give us a quick, like, just a quick rundown of like what your job entails? Because I think it'll help shape um, the depth of your understanding of so many topics that we can start jumping into. Because you've got a pretty big ecosystem you're managing. Well, I, you know, I, I really am a, a ski bum. Um, that's, that's w- what it's all about. And, and the ski bum means a lot to me. Uh, and I got, think I got to unpack that a little bit first. You know, ski bums uh, take care of each other and ski bums share. Uh, you have to, you know, find places to stay. And sometimes that might be a couch. Maybe it's food or sustenance that they may, you might get. They help you on your way for joy. They point you to the, the run or the secret spot for powder. I mean, all of that stuff is what it's all about for me. And and I, I wouldn't, uh, you know, for me, I look at it and say, I am all about helping others uh, enjoy the, the their journey. Um, I, I call it the, the, the journey of discovery. And marketing to me is, is not marketing to, to its story sharing um, and and it's a journey of discovery. And and that's what I look at it. And I, I think might be different than maybe others and, and certainly in the ski or travel space. To me, uh, you can never take a, a shortcut away from realizing how powerful um, the journey of discovery is. So we get that the the connection that you have there and that makes a ton of sense of again the why what is like you know in practical terms we know as you're on your day-to-day job and you're now looking at sort of now sharing that and and sort of personifying those values like is, is story it sounds to me like you're saying storytelling is sort of your number one primary function is to kind of you know communicate through stories, story selling, if you will. Well, I think the strategy for me, the anchor is, is the story, uh, you know, and I, and I think a lot of people take their different approach on the tactics uh, and how they deliver that or share that. But I first think I take the time, you know, with our team to say, okay, you know, the, these powerful stories, we have so many in each of our mountain communities. And, uh, and I think it behooves us to, you know, go and find and then guide and then uh, inspire uh, uh, forward uh, and, and how we then tactically take that, each of those. I, I don't look at it as traditional, um, you know, advertising um, driving out your marketing strategy, I look at it as the story is the driver, and and it's all about uh, how is that story going to be helpful, worthy, and real, and 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 pleasing, and and appreciated by our community. Makes a ton of sense. Like when you and I, I remember you and I having our first coffee conversation, and um, you know I was sharing my whole angle on cat skiing and heli skiing, which was there's a lot of people producing great content. That's what you call AK powder porn. Um, I wanted to do more of the behind the scenes and the journey getting ready for, for it, the excitement, the anticipation, and um, then the experience, you know, that you share with your friends or people that you meet on these, uh, on these exceptional trips and um, that's the one thing I see with your marketing is you just really um, try to make more of an emotional connection because um, I think, you know, you can list off all the runs. You can list off here's the, um, you know, the snowfall, the amenities, but that's just really surface, right? And, you know, I think what you've done is you've really um, inspired people um, beyond being a ski customer just to become fellow ski bums with you. Is that accurate? 
You, you know, absolutely. And, and uh, you know, I don't, I look at, uh, it's not, a, you know, the customer, it's the community and, and, and their friends and, you know, we're, we're, and we're on this, uh, I, I, I truly believe that, uh, and it's not advertising, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's story sharing and it needs to be this, uh, this entertainment, this provide this value uh, and, and then the channels, you know, you can work through how, what channels you want to share it on. And, and, and sometimes the, the, the vessel, the boat, uh, the ski of choice, you know, may be the, the influencer route. Um, and part of that influencer could be, you know, the one who's out there with a massive Instagram audience, or it could be just a local, uh, really important treasure you may have that, that skis every day and, uh, the unsung hero that's out there, from the first tracks to the last tracks. And so it's, it's, it's about, it's about nurturing and defining that spirit of flake making is the way I look at it. And I would call my form of, of story sharing, or if you want to call it marketing, I call it flake making. Love it. So on the influencer topic, I think one of the things that um, I was really impressed with your process thinking and strategy if you if you will around um managing influencers and i experienced it firsthand when you invited me to be an influencer on two different trips and uh, i was just really impressed with how engaged you were um you know and on one hand you you really wanted to almost like set the table for people to have a really good time but let them do what they do. And I was curious if you could unbox sort of like starting first with your mindset and strategy when in how you identify, you know, manage and develop uh, influencers. Cause I think what you've done, if I could kind of like put, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but like a lot of people look at influencers, like they look at ad campaigns. It's like how many followers you got. You have a totally different take. Can you kind of share with us at that process? Yeah, no, I think um, I think it's. Uh, I've tried to look at it from the ski bum eyes and from a person who travels in, in the trail uh, and uh, and unfold the way that nature would unfold this. And I think you know nature has a, a bit of a guide. You know, it could be that trail, it could be your route uh, to the mountaintop. So. There is a bit of a, a shaping of it. Part of that shaping is, you know, this just establishing the why. You know, would someone want to come, you know, to your to your place and 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 the who of you know who's best suited for that place? Because some trails may require a person who's got more skill and and or needs different equipment. So it's just unpacking those elements and that you know how we develop and then articulate um, that 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 story that can unfold with you know through that uh you know that that uh superhero uh i call um influencers i mean it's it's super powerful there's tons of statistics on influencers out there and i I, i'm really passionate about working with people that that i've had coffee with um like you and i had coffee scott and and it's getting to know the person, getting to know the person's uh, views, uh, how they how they engage, how they share stories, what's important, what's meaningful to them, what matters to them, because I think you need to fit them into that. Uh, where when you're developing and articulating this this um, uh, place, it's it's fitting the audience, uh, that person's audience, to the type of experience that your place delivers appropriately and and it's, and and that they have great conversations just like you know you'd have at that coffee shop uh, with their audience and and with their people and that's super super important for me and then shaping it how we do shape it a bit is just to make sure that we're very authentic with the place you know, it's like, uh, I'm not gonna, if it's not going to be a place for p- hardcore, uh, uh, you know, aggressive, steep and deep lovers, um, you know, then that you, you don't, I don't want to portray or, or falsely portray that that's the type of place it it's, it's for. If it's a more mellow groom tree ski, uh, low aspect, uh, type of experience, 
I want to make sure that th- those elements on the actual skiing and riding side are portrayed appropriately. And then I want to make sure the town and the community experience is appropriate too. If some people like to want to have an influencer who's maybe a more um, different level and they like um, marble countertops and gold fixtures. But well, maybe the towns along the Powder Highway, that's not the, the uh, appropriate influencer. So it's it's there is some 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 scripting that goes on, but I don't like to over uh, and be overly involved either. Once we've got the right people who are passionate and share that similar uh, adventure and can convey uh, a powerful story that's authentic and real to their audience, then essentially the elements of after we've had a, a bit of a discussion on them, uh, then they go and 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 craft that uh in an inspiring way through their own eyes and so that they can captivate and and generate uh the story in their own way and that's really super important um because i don't i don't um you know it's it's like uh they're not if i could control them then and 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 uh gear down, then they're not, it's not going to be a right, rightful story that's coming from, from their heart. And I think it's super important for them to share, uh, their way, uh, through highlighting and animating all of their own senses. Amazing. Like, and I can say for myself being on the end of an influencer with you, what I experienced was a couple of things that were very different and I have not seen, in all my influencer marketing, um, you know, experiences, I haven't seen anybody execute it quite this way. And one of the things you did that was cool was you had a schedule for us and it wasn't just, um, uh, a tour of, uh, check stops. It, you involved the community and you wanted us not just to experience the ski hill, but we, you had us out into, I think where it was Fernie. So we had us out into, uh, meeting some of the people in front. I think it was the chamber and then went to a couple of restaurants and there was just all this really sort of um, connecting outside of just the ski hill. You could have easily just had us. I mean, we did have one session where we did the ice bar up at the ski hill, but, but we had these other experiences outside of it. And I thought that was really um, inclusive of you. And, you know, I was just curious, like what kind of results you've seen from that? Is it customer or community support? Or I think it makes more of interesting storytelling too, because all these influencers are telling these bigger stories. And so maybe share with us a little bit about your strategy there. Well, I think, it, you know, it, it, it's a, it goes back to that uh, community piece. It's so important on the ski bum, uh, you know, can't survive without their community. And, and I think that those are all the elements that you need to have a part of the story. It's like an onion, they're the layers and, and, uh, and it's the peeling back or, or the discovering a, a, as you go. And I think, you know, as long as you're really, um, real, uh, the, you know, and, and, uh, you can't get more real than, than, uh, throwing in all of the, the, uh, community pieces, the, the elements that make your community special. And it's not making anything up. It's not changing them. It's really immersing your, your, uh, influencers. And I know I hate that word influencer, but it really immersing the, the, your people into the real experience. And I, I think that that, you know, is, uh, if you if you look at your content mission and and it's it's really needs to be uh, meaningful uh, needs to inspire curiosity both in the influencer uh, because if you're doing that then you're stoking the flame for them and then you're, you're letting it magically unfold for them and then they're capturing that in their own way uh, rich and 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 uh, emotionally um, and and then that those stories that come out of that are, uh, well, all the elements you have in there, you're building the building blocks so that they can come out of the story with uh, a bunch of elements that are really ma- meaningful to them. Then they, they leave and they go, wow, you know, it wasn't about, you know, the, the snow maybe, but boy, that, that, uh, when we did that snowshoe walk and those big cedar trees and, and the smell uh, of cedar, uh, and the flakes falling, really slowly and powerfully down. Um, I mean, just all of those elements just kind of unfold for that person. And I think you have your best times in some of your simplest and purest moments. 
That's awesome. One of the other things that I saw that you did that was quite cool. Um, I'm not sure if uh, what you would call it, but what you did, I've seen other, I've been part of other influencer strategies, but it's usually you're all focused on that one influencer, their experience at whatever you're trying to, to work with them with. But what you did was you brought us all together. And a couple things that I, that I thought was quite interesting as a result of that was one is I got to meet all the other influencers and it gave me a really good insight out into what I think the qualities you're looking for in influencers. And the one attribute that I saw consistent across all of them was number one, they all were um, uh, incredible at, at their own craft and their channel or the type of content they create, but they were all totally different. The other common uh, attribute was they all cared. Like they really did care about this and they were in it for like, let's get the most out of this experience. And the third and last piece was part of the experience was that we got to experience this all together. It almost created an amplification or an exponential return for you. So I'm wondering if, you know, un- like that was my experience. What is your sort of like, like you, this is obviously the mat recipe for doing this. Can you share with us a little bit about the thinking and how you've come up with this and and what other things am I not mentioning that have really impacted by you doing this immersive style of uh, influencer marketing? Well, you know, Scott, I think it's, uh, uh, you know, no, it's actually pretty uh, simple. I think ski bums, uh, we, we, we have a fairly uh, simple life and, and, and those simple things, uh, sometimes I think in our other worlds, they get complicated, uh, and and uh, we remove ourselves. Uh, the, the more complicated or uh, uh, more involved it gets, uh, we remove ourselves from the basic elements. I, I keep going back down to the the simple senses, you know, the smell, see, taste, you know, uh, those things, uh, the interaction, the connection. You know, we're talking about real people and getting people that really care. Um, and that have a promise in life and a purpose in their life. You know, I, I think uh, that they, I look at these people like yourself that it's, you know, that it's, it's a, um, I'm they're, they're, they're It's about a, I call it this, this, um, you know, really deeper uh, meaning uh, and, and deeper uh, purpose. And, and they're, they're on, for me, it's the long trail uh, approach to life. And when you're on the long trail, it's it's uh, it's a uh, you you got to watch the type of people that you walk with, and and you got to carry things that are appropriate, but you can't carry much, and you got to think about the basic survival instincts, you know, whether it's water and and simple foods, and I think you know people get very deeply connected with simple things that are done really well, and they're super strong, um, and that's the type of people that we bring together are people that are deeply connected like yourself, deeply have deep purposes and deeper and are, uh, uh, on the long trail of life, uh, uh, for, um, and, and looking at things with a, a deeper, uh, meaning and, and doing things that really matter. And I think that's, that's how, uh, you have to do these things. And, and so it takes a little more effort to find the people, but then you set up this, uh, it's no, it's like you know. I always look at the classic road trip. Ski bums go on a road trip with with other ski bums, and 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 uh, and those let those moments uh, unfold uh, on their own because you've got the people in there that are really have heightened senses. Um, you know, they're they're seeing, smelling, tasting things uh, just uh, as 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 a uh, as powerfully as a a golden retriever uh, w- would in its search uh, for a little morsel of food. And I think then as they, on, as that, those experiences unfold for them and those interactions uh, get con- even more connected with each other and they get more uh, engaged with the place, this is just a, it's uh, the, you know, the, I, I call it this whole, um, uh, it's, uh, it's this, this massive, um, uh, uh, cascade of, of goodness that just comes out pouring from it. And, and I think that's how we have to look at things. You know, it's, it's very simple. Um, and yet it does take uh, a little bit more time to set up in the beginning, but it's, it's really connecting with the right people. I have coffee with every 
person that I do a project with. Yep, I'm. I, you did that with me. We had actually a couple of coffees before you had me on board. We we you know what? When you have coffee, and I love coffee, strong uh, coffee, craft coffee. Um, when you have coffee with people, you sit there and you talk with people, and 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 more importantly, hopefully, you do less talking and you listen and uh, and you listen lots. And then I I have had every single one of our content missions. Uh, just, uh, you know, um, they're amazing um, uh, if you take that extra time. And, and then I think it's the, the uh, pre-trip dream, you know, you, you reflect on and think of uh, and you ask, uh, well, okay, so, um, you know, uh, I think there's certain elements you need to, to put in there. And, and I think even on our, our experience at Fernie, like you mentioned, you know, we, we, we needed to, uh, everybody's coming from different places and spaces, but we needed to get the people together and, and, uh, then we, then we talk about it. And, and I think that that's super important and they get to know a little bit more of the background of each other and, and they, and, and the warmth happens. And, and then we unfold, uh, each step, uh, from their experiences and, and people have that uh, a bit of a trust bond that's that's magic that's that's uh, built um, you know fairly immediately uh, uh, um, through that connection. And then once they start moving forward, as the flow happens for the, whatever adventure you're doing, um, the collaboration happens, and, and collaboration you know drives innovation, it drives creativity. So then now the videographer is working with the Instagram or about a little another a project element or adding this into the writer's story and boom, it's just this cascade of goodness that happens out of it. Um, if you have the right people and that's why I, I do every one of mine in groups. I don't do a standalone stuff anymore. It, it shows <clears throat> when I was with, with the group, um, we would collaborate like some person go, Hey, can you do a time lapse of me doing this? And it just things you wouldn't be able to do on your own. And then what we also were doing is over dinner, we were sharing um, ways that we were, you know, amplifying content or creating content. Uh, you know, I remember uh, Kate uh, Zessel, I think her name mm-hmm. is. She's the artist. She's amazing. And and she's shown me all these really cool techniques and stuff. And, and uh, it was such a great experience. So I can see how that has, um, you know, a, a, a exponential return by this, unique sort of group that you've brought together it's it's uh it's impressive the one thing that i did notice that is the result so you mentioned the result in terms of like the great content deeper content all those sort of things but one of the things that with your process both connecting with people building a relationship and you know i i I believe every person that was there like myself included how i feel is like we all like let's do the best we possibly can for matt right that was kind of the pervasive mindset but what I also found is I follow you and, and I share your content all the time. Um, but I also noticed so do they. And I think what you've done is people are buying in to we're now part of your tribe, your ski bum crew, and we want to support you and and we support each other. So I always share their stuff and so forth. So what you have is almost like an echo effect where I've seen a lot of uh, people work with influencers and they literally, the relationship stops after the um, publishing of whatever content they did for them. There's no ongoing sort of relationship and you've completely for you know lack of a better term you've completely hacked it like this is like uh you know influencer hacking is what i would call this you've you've cracked the code well it's it's a i mean thank you for uh i appreciate that those are all uh you know wonderful that uh i think it comes down to the the friendships uh really matter um and i think uh you have to go down this path uh, again, like the ski bum. Those friendships matter for life. I, I mean, I have my ski bums from, you know, very long uh, time ago. It will always take me in. You know, that if I'm in, on a drive through some mountain town, uh, I've always got a place to stay. I've always got a meal, and uh, you know, even sometimes in the old days, I had gas money from them. So 
it's it's a it's an amazing you know if you look at um, you know providing how can you be helpful and worthy to your community every step of the way. I you know ultimately I hope that everybody uh, in that community will be sharing uh, and helping each other uh, um, for, forward. And and I think that you know it's just it's like snow make the snowmaker or flake making, you know, it's like this, you, if you create a, a storm of goodness and that'll hopefully provide that, that wind at your tail, um, uh, uh, for positive growth forward. And, uh, and I think that's, that's uh, a big focus, you know, and some people you can't see that if you're a short term thinker or if you're on a fixed mindset, it's always that you have to have a growth mindset, but growth for the right reason with the right people and growth uh, surrounded by goodness. And I don't think it's growth, you know, that uh, if you do growth for the wrong reason, um, you know, ultimately it's going to come back and, and and, uh, kick you in the ass. And I think uh, if you go forward, building, trusting friendships long-term over and over and over and over, you will gain goodness in your life and and i think that's uh i've been showing it it works you know it, and i ski a lot and and i ski in different communities all the time and every one of those communities helps me out and and uh, they take care of me and they support me and and i am truly truly grateful for that amazing i love that goodness for growth or or using growth for goodness or goodness how, what would you say? <laughs> if you go forward uh, uh, with the mindset of growth, it is about goodness. So right. it's growing goodness forward. Love it. Every step of I the way. I think that's totally, you know, that's you. And I can see that's how the effect that you've you've had on the community, the industry, um, you know, you're deeply respected and it's, it's fantastic. Um, I love that you and I were just talking before the podcast, we were still recording and you touched on a really important point, which is, um, this short-term thinking and the, the, the mindset that's, you know, fairly pervasive right now. Like there's, everybody's looking for the shortcut, you know, grow faster, grow bigger, but to what end? The um, you know, and I think what you're you're underscoring with what you just described is the threads. These these multiple layers of threads of relationships create these incredible ropes of of success. Um, and it doesn't come easy. It's a long term mindset. I was wondering if you could kind of share a little bit of you know your you know the industry. You know you know, deeply know marketing. You know. You, you and I talked about like just this big contrast, you know, short term thinking versus long term. And this podcast, of course, is about sustainable growth marketing. And I can't stress how important that is. Could you maybe share a little bit about like your experience with how this you've seen the effect of this and where do you see it going in the future and, and why the short term is not working? Well, you know, gosh, yeah, there's just so much there. Um, and and uh, good on you, uh, Scott, for bringing this forward, because uh, it is it is a super challenge. Uh, we have um, the widgets people and product pricing people just, uh, you know, they, they move forward on buying ads and and uh, providing uh, pollution. And I think that's uh not right and it's not good i mean i i think you know we uh, there's sure companies need to make money and, and be profitable but i think you can do it in a way that where you're actually adding value you're being helpful you're being worthy you're being authentic and you're taking the time and you're taking the time and and some of that is taking the time with with where where you're, with the content creation side or the story side too, because I believe it all starts with the story and you're being rightful and worthy and helpful with that story. And then you're sharing it in ways that, that are meaningful and, and matter to people and not in a way that it's obtrusive or, or evasive or, 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 um, 
uh, t- taking valuable time away from their from from them uh, at a time where it's not right. So I think it's it's it is you know, and it's different obviously for all different segments. I mean, I'm I'm fortunate. Uh, very grateful to be that I love the sport of, of skiing and snowboarding and the space of mountain travel, um, you know, because it is a, a passion for people. But I think that even means more. Uh, it, and it, it uh, we have a right uh, to uh, even in passion sports, I think you have to take even a higher level or, or a, a higher stance to make sure you take the time um, to be providing value, uh, and not interrupting and, and being helpful, uh, and not, um, uh, wasting people's time. And, and I think, uh, if you value, you know, your experience, you, you create and craft really incredible stories, you share them in a helpful, uh, timely uh, way, and those and and that brings goodness uh, to your audience and and when they when they read it that they'll, they're going to share it more often obviously it's going to flip side it's going to be that's going to bring more um, goodness back to you and and I so I think it's uh, you you need to take the time to work with the right people you need to take the time to craft the right story and and uh, and then you need to take the time uh, uh, to deliver that story in the right way. Yeah, this exactly what you now were talking about, this mindful marketing, just, you know, move like it, it always surprised me that there's uh, uh, companies out there that go through such care about the product that they produce. They go, they do the things that you're mentioning, like they want to uh, provide value in these type of things. But when it comes to marketing, they do the opposite. They, they interrupt, they, you know, um, basically create pollution but yet, you know, they would never in a million years it would go against their central value to put one little piece of paper and leave it on the ground because you can tell that they're just like ethically bound to helping the earth and make a better place. But yet they don't do it in marketing. I find it such an interesting place we're in where I think there is a shift in thinking where people are really understanding that there can be a place for beautiful marketing, compassionate commerce, um, you know. And I'm curious to think what uh, your thoughts are on on where you think maybe we can create this trend, or if you think it's going to happen. Well, I think it is going to happen. I mean, I I also am am a crazy optimist, so I believe that um, the power of of uh, of doing what's right can change not only uh, uh, be an influence on others to to change as well. And I do think that making a difference really does matter and then i think over time too your audience will migrate and move you know it's like the the uh uh big uh uh uh, spawn of salmon on a river Um, they'll choose their creeks wisely um you know based on their history and time and and that it was a worthy place for for growing up so i think they're going to return to the right place the audience is on a great um you know, uh, um, journey right now and sure they're getting hit by paid ads and sponsored and all kinds of stuff. Um, and, and sure some of the companies are, you know, doing well with that. Um, but you're already seeing a decline. You're seeing a decline and you're seeing costs go up on that way. Uh, and, and that's the easy thing. I always think it's easy to be a cost cutter and it's easy just to buy ads. And uh, the hard part is crafting, um, you know, stories that, that matter and make a difference. And, 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 it, and it's easy. Um, the other side is the easier. And so most companies choose the easier and, and, and they see immediate return and they can track it. And sure, your analytics and data, there's elements of that do matter for sure. But I think we've gone a little too hardcore on the da- data side and the analytics side, and we've moved away from actually sharing the real stories and, and content that really makes a difference. And if you if you know your audience really well, and you really help them out, and you really make a difference for them, uh, th- then I think those companies uh, will be stronger for, for that. Yeah, I think you need to have senior buy-in all the way to the top to be able to 
see that plan through because in my experience, um, if the owner even doesn't sort of see that as being core to the business, at some point, the short-term thinking will bubble back up and it won't allow the the seed to turn into the oak tree, so to speak. You're absolutely right. And I think, you know, the culture of a company is critical to to that um, and having trust and and respecting uh, uh, team members, uh, uh, their capabilities and, and their skills uh, that really, really matters. And, and I think, though, you know, that's one of the other things, too. I think it's also behooves more uh, leaders to take the time to help and develop uh, other marketeers. Um, because, you know, what's happening with marketing, too, it's, it's become just one of the widgets. It's like accounting. You know, you can buy some you know, software and, and you can run your marketing, essentially. The hard part that you can't replace is that creative and uh, inspiration. And, and uh, that's the magic, being able to craft real powerful art is the magic that can't, you know, necessarily at this point be uh, replicated. You know, you know, you know me and, and how I've gone through, you know, I've, I've had multiple paths of, of my journey searching and, and always testing and trying different things. And I've gone down the rabbit hole with a lot of short term growth tactics to see what would be sustainable. And for the most part, um, they're not. And <laughs> it's because the, the world changes and just like anything, you know, once um, what becomes sort of like a short term parlor trick, for lack of a better term, um, you know, unless it's serving massive value to the customer, it's not sustainable because soon enough, everyone else is doing it and it's no longer, you know, special. So, you know, one of the things that I think you and I share, there's a, a couple one platform in particular that I think hardly anybody really talks about that I think is. Um, exemplary in the sense that it's it provides sort of beautiful marketing. Um, and I'm wondering if uh, you want to talk about that a little bit. Well, yeah, and I, I, I do. And I think what we really step back really quickly, I think the other piece, the, the incredible art, and I think the other side is this power of positivity, power of bringing and sharing and providing uh, goodness and coming from the space of of helping others, helping your community, and making a difference uh, uh, for the environment and for your community. That really, really, those two at this point can't be replicated. It comes from uh, a, a, a caring, soul filled, joyful, happy human. And, and, and I think those are the ones, there's not as many of those out there and there's a lot more of the others buying ads and click. And I think the ad and click, click and ad, uh, program is actually going, going to uh, dipping, uh, quicker and quicker, uh, uh, every day. So let's move on to a really powerful, that's a good segue story, uh, telling and story sharing, um, channel. And that's called Stellar, S-T-E-L-L-E-R. Um, you can download the app. It's a, it's a wonderful app. And it's going through some uh, really cool uh, updates right now. So in this next uh, month, everybody should be sh- uh, sharing and experiencing um, even more uh, goodness uh, from it and the ability to share uh, a robust uh, uh, story. And, you know, it's, it's, it's not just a a one faceted uh, story, you know, it's not just an image, it's not just a few words, a, a text box, but it's got all the elements. You got your video um, to show and share uh, real, uh, uh, and you've got your your single image, uh, and you've got your written uh, craft uh, word, and and you can do you know multiple uh, pages, so it's a a short, fun. Um, much more robust way of, of sharing, uh, um, worthy, uh, experiences. Yeah, it's, it's cool. I mean, I, I joined when it was in beta, 
Uh, and um, to me, I've always thought it was beautiful. I was amazed that it didn't take off as quick as I thought. I think I wrote an article on my LinkedIn about it, um, you know, many years ago. And what I do like about it is, as you described, is that it's a little bit, it can be like a flip book. You can, one page can be static, then one with an image, and it's just beautifully displayed. And the, it has all the attributes that you'd want from, like, say, Instagram or Twitter to follow or have people follow you to, to get um, access. And then the shareability, it's quite, it's quite got a beautiful shareability um, aspect to it. I think it's this, this I, I'm going to call it microblogging, for lack of a better term, unless you have one that I don't know. But I love the storytelling capability where instead of it being a post and it's, like, single serving – this can bring you along in a journey as you kind of um, go through um, adventures. So I'd encourage you to even go check out uh, Matt Steller because he's really somebody that's the shining example of like how to use it properly. And what's your address on Stellar? Do you mind? Can we just plug it? At Powder Matt. So just go to the Stellar and and uh, download the app and and uh, go uh, uh, search up at Powder Matt and uh, – Boy, that's awesome! I'd love to to get people's feedback and input on on uh, what I've been sharing on Stellar and and Scott. Thank you for for that and um, your your input. I appreciate that very much because uh, you're an amazing uh, story uh, crafter yourself. So um, it's it is really good, and I know you were on it early. You are, have been uh, following this for a long time, and and uh, I do think. Um, it's powerful. And I think more and more people, it's growing quickly right now because I think people are looking for a place where they can have a more meaningful, longer form connection with their audience. I agree. In fact, I actually have been saving saying anything about Stellar for this episode. I've asked a couple people that are incredible, um, you know, individuals in digital marketing. They've never mentioned it. I actually think that this is the next platform. Um, and, uh, you know, so if you're not on Stellar, you might want to go check it out. Um, Matt, you've been a great guest. The great thing is it's you're pretty easy to find. Just look up Powder Matt on any platform and there he is. Um, you could do a deep dive and lose a weekend trying to get into all the post stories and articles he's written. And if you love the outdoors powder and winter, man, you're in for a treat. So anyways, thank you, Matt, so much for taking the time to be on the show. We've covered so much ground. Um, and I know we just share so many things together, both in person, but also in mindset and marketing. So thank you so much for being on the show. Hey, Scott, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And everybody go out there and be nice and give back and go deep. There you have it. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on this episode of the Groundswell Marketing Podcast. You can reach me at scott at groundswell.marketing. And uh, if you're looking for the show notes, just go to groundswell.fm. And please, on iTunes, uh, please leave a review, give us some stars, give us some love, um, and let us know what you think. Again, thank you, everyone, and mahalo. Mahalo.